Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be testing out some new luxury and high-end makeup and sharing my first impressions with you, including this brand new Guerlain Terracotta La Tint Foundation. This has been one of the few new launches so far in 2023 that immediately caught my eye because I've had a lot of luck with Guerlain foundations. They're usually some of my favorites and holy grails. So I ordered shade 3N. I'm hoping this shade works for me. And I got mine directly from the Guerlain website. I know this is now available on Sephora.com. I'm glad I picked it up from Guerlain because they included a little sample satchel. I was looking for it, I can't find it at the moment. But they included some of their exclusive fragrances, including Oud Nude, which I had never tried before, but I heard incredible things and I couldn't wait. I did try the sample and it smells so nice. So I need to make sure I find it later on. They list out most of the important details directly on the box and the back of the bottle. They kind of hit all of the high points. So it says, Terracotta La Tint, Healthy Glow Natural Perfection Foundation, 24 hour wear, no transfer, 95% naturally derived ingredients. And usually when you see the frosted glass bottle like this one, it signifies that this is going to be more of a matte foundation. Before we begin, I am going to apply a little lip mask. My lips have been so dry because I'm using my really intense skincare. And if I accidentally get it anywhere around my lips, they will start cracking, especially in the corners. And it's very painful. So I'm trying to be more careful when I apply it in the evening. I'm using this Tatcha Japanese Peach Lip Jelly Lip Mask just because it's close. I'm gonna give it a little shake. The only thing I have on my skin right now is a very thick moisturizer. And then I did tap just a teeny tiny bit of concealer on my chin because it was a little bit red and irritated. And I just needed to color correct that so it didn't look funny. Right away I noticed it has a pretty thick creamy consistency and I am going to use this old Marc Jacobs The Face 2 brush because it's clean. Unfortunately I don't think these are available anymore and it's truly a shame because I swear by the Marc Jacobs foundation brushes. But there's a BK Beauty brush that's very similar that I will link instead. Same shape but that one is dirty, so I'm using this one. I like the shade so far. It's very perfecting. I don't think there is a scent. Usually Guerlain products are so heavily scented. And I do kind of smell a little something, but it's so faint. Usually it's overpowering. I think they finally listened to the feedback because I know most people did not like how heavily fragranced their cosmetics are. I don't have really sensitive skin so it never really bothered me, but I could see why it would be a turn off. It's maybe a little powdery, a little powdery, a little musky, but it's not bad and you really have to stick your nose in the foundation to pick it up. It does have quite a bit of glow to it. I did not expect that. I thought it was going to be way more matte than this. I need a little bit more for my forehead. Try not to get it in my hair. I think I really like it. By now it's definitely dried down on the cheeks and there's still so much light reflection. I cannot believe it. It's very perfecting. I wouldn't say it's incredibly forgiving with pores. That's the one thing I don't love 110% about it right now is that I do sort of see a little emphasis on texture and I think that's just because I haven't applied any powder yet. I think this is the type of foundation that you're going to want to use as minimal, the smallest amount you possibly can get away with. So I think in the future I'll probably try to make one pump work for the entire face. It's not looking bad on my chin. And my chin is so dry at the moment. My very initial impression so far with just the foundation on is that it kind of reminds me of Chanel Le Beige in that it's kind of a medium buildable coverage. I would say this is maybe a little bit more full coverage, but it still has a little glow to it. Also the Dior Forever Glow comes to mind, but I think the shade range is better with the Guerlain because the Dior tends to oxidize very dark. And I haven't given it a proper go just yet, but the new Makeup by Mario foundation, I think this is probably very comparable to that. I don't know if I'm going to love it as much as my L'Essential High Perfection, 
but I need to finish the rest of my makeup. Givenchy recently sent over their new concealer and they sent, I think, three shades. These are the only two I could locate. This is the Prisma Libre Skin Caring Concealer. I have N80 and N95. I generally like a very bright under eye, so I'm gonna go with the lighter shade. Oh yeah, that's nice and bright. And I didn't read anything about it. So I'm gonna apply it first and then I'll look it up. I also haven't seen any reviews yet and I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this concealer. Seems like it has medium buildable coverage. I'm gonna start by just manipulating it a bit, moving it around but not completely blending it out. I'm using a Sephora Pro Pro Highlight 98 brush for this. One thing I am so excited about for the upcoming Sephora savings event is stocking up on more of the Pro brushes. I know I have talked about them a lot last year, but I swear by them, they're so good. They're already reasonably priced, I think, for really good brushes, and then they're 30% off. It's definitely one of the best deals you can get during the savings event. It's time to mist. I'm going in with just a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is one of my favorite setting mists. Oh, that shot directly in my eye. Why? There we go. <laughs> I know this is a new bottle, but I don't know why it just it got me right in the eye. <laughs> I'm just going back with the Marc Jacobs foundation brush. This will help blend the two together because it is definitely maintaining brightness. I thought once it had a minute to kind of settle down and dry down on the face, it would oxidize and it wouldn't be quite so bright, but the concealer is very bright. This is what I like, but I don't want it to be too harsh either. And the under eyes look so smooth, very smooth. Oh wow. There's something about this combination that I am loving. This makes me so happy. I think the shades worked really nicely together, but also the finishes of both the foundation and the concealer, they look perfect. Now I do have a little creasing under my eye, but it's my skin. It's not the concealer. Setting powder really is the non-negotiable for me. I always use my Chanel Natural Finish Loose Powder. This is the shade 10. Is it 10 or 01? Yes, it's 10. It's so finely milled. It perfectly sets everything. And I just love it. Zero complaints, zero builds. I don't feel like I need to test every new powder. I feel like I found my one go-to. The only other new bronzer I had to try is this Sephora collection. This is the Sephora Matte Bronzer in the shade 03 Santorini. It looks a little bit light, but I'm kind of curious. So I'm gonna try this with the Sephora Pro 59 powder brush. I do wanna try all of my Sephora collection products before the savings event so I can share my thoughts. Well, it definitely shows up. I think I like the color, but it is a little bit patchy. I don't know if I love this formula. I don't know, maybe it's the brush? I'm not sure. The color is fine though. I might just need to keep blending a little bit more. On the forehead, it looks fine. On the cheek, it's a little bit patchy, but I think it's because I accidentally went in with way too much and the first swipe was probably too much product. So I just need to keep blending. Finally, I'm going to try one of these new House Labs blushes. These I've seen everywhere. I've heard so much buzz and excitement about them. These are all over social media at the moment. The shade range is beautiful. I do really like the packaging. And everybody says they are so incredibly pigmented, which I think is a great selling point for eyeshadow for blush. I don't mind if a blush is a little bit softer. I think if it's too pigmented, it might be difficult to blend. That can be a little bit intimidating and less user-friendly, but needless to say, I'm gonna try it. This is the shade Pomelo Peach. So beautiful. I love a warm peachy pink for spring, summer. The price is a bit outrageous at $38, but this pan is huge and people have said that it's about double what you get in a normal blush pan. So you do have to take that into consideration. Now, if you already have a huge collection of blushes, adding one more jumbo blush to your collection for $38, 
probably isn't going to be all that appealing to you, but if you don't have a huge blush collection, if you see a shade that really catches your eye, that you love, you know, it's something that you're gonna use constantly, then it might actually be worth it to just go for the larger pan. I'm nervous, I'm nervous I'm gonna pick up too much product. I don't think this is the right blush brush for this. It's a rougher 04, but I'm doing my best to use clean brushes today. <laughs> So I don't want to go in with anything else that may have other pigments on it. Okay, let's see. I don't know. Maybe the brush isn't doing it justice because I don't like that. I picked up another clean brush from the back. This is a Refer 19. It's a little fluffier. I'm trying to just blend a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna try this on the other side, let's see. Okay, that's a little bit better. I think that first brush was a little bit too dense. It really was not blending very nicely. Yeah, they are very pigmented. Does it look like I have a bruise on my face? <laughs> what is happening? The good news is it's just makeup and we can always fix it. I think that was coming off just a little bit too harsh. So I just went back with my Marc Jacobs foundation brush, no additional product, and I'm just kind of softening the edges. I like the blush, but it is very pigmented and it's not really light, silky, really smooth and easy. At least this initial application wasn't. And it could be the shade, it could have been the brush, it could have been that it just didn't really look nice on top of the bronzer. I still think the makeup is salvageable and it's gonna look really nice in the end. I wonder if anybody else has had sort of a mixed experience using this. I like it. At this rate, this would take me probably 10 years to finish one of them because you really don't need much. Bound and determined to make this work, I'm going in with one of my new favorite highlighters. This is from Rare Beauty. I never used this in a YouTube video, I don't think. This is the shade Enlighten. I was sent a giant PR box with all of the shades. This one is probably my favorite. They are all stunning. As opposed to the liquid highlighters that I think go on so subtle, these powder highlighters are blinding. This is for the intense highlighter lover. So I'm just going in with a little brush. I'm gonna use this to highlight the cheeks. I have to give a very special shout out to Alyssa Sullivan, who was my fragrance giveaway winner. I just sent her package this morning. I contacted her a couple days ago yesterday. She reached out right away. I was able to get her address and send off the gift. I'm super excited for her. And if you're wondering, ooh, see how bright that is? If you're wondering about the rest of the fragrance giveaways, they are coming. In fact, I will be announcing another one of the giveaways today. So make sure you head over to Instagram so you can enter that one. I have so much more to give away, so many great giveaway items coming your way. So please don't be disappointed if you didn't win that initial giveaway. There are so many more. I wasn't able to fire them off all in the same week because in short, last week kicked my butt big time. I did not see it coming. And I just became so overwhelmed. I did not have time to be able to announce all of them, but I'm still planning to do all of the giveaways. I used such a small amount of product, I tapped off the excess and it still looks like a glazed donut. I also think it's because this shade is just really bright and pearly. But I kind of love it. It looks so smooth. It just looks like your skin is glazed. So now we need to do something to the eyes. I want to keep it kind of simple since today is really about the face. And I don't have any new eyeshadow palettes and I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, what am I gonna use on the eyes today? 
And I remembered that I do have this very beautiful neutral eyeshadow palette from Lancome. I don't believe this is new, it's new for me. I purchased mine from Bloomingdale's because they had a little gift with purchase and I needed this for a campaign I was working on with Lancome and I think this is one of the most stunning neutral eyeshadow palettes. I don't think I've ever heard anybody so much as mention it, but it's really something special. I've only used it once, so we're gonna try it again today. I'm going in with a Refer 15 and I'm just gonna pick up this kind of pinky brown over here. This shade is a little bit more pinky than this one, but they're very similar. And this is going to go in the crease. The reason I picked this palette up is because I mentioned I was working on a campaign with Lancome. I recreated a red carpet makeup look from Zendaya and her makeup artist, and she looked incredible, and he used this eyeshadow palette on her. Ooh, yeah, that's perfect. I don't think I've ever mentioned this yet, and many of you probably don't know, but besides my long-term partnership with Sephora as part of the Sephora Squad program, I was actually brought on this year to be a Lancome ambassador for 2023, which is such an incredible honor, and I'm so excited to be partnering with them and working with them on campaigns. Most of the content I've created with them so far has been for TikTok, so I'm sure many people haven't seen it but it has been so much fun. And Lancome is one of the first brands I ever started wearing and using whenever I first was allowed to start wearing makeup. So it's kind of a full circle moment for me. The Tinty Doll Foundation was one of my very first, if not the very first foundation I ever used because my older sister used the Tinty Doll Foundation. Of course, I wanted to be just like her. And she used Lancome because my mom used Lancome and she used to bring us as kids to the Lancome counter. Lancome Estee Lauder Clinique, that is where I first got introduced to makeup because my mom would go purchase whatever she needed and then they would give her the gift with purchase and she would sort of divvy it up between my sister and I so we could play with all of the little samples. That shade is so pretty. It really is more of a pinky brown, but it's not pink, which is what I love about it. It's not pulling to pinky red. It's a real pinky brown, almost a mauve pink. The Lancome has some incredible makeup. I think it's one of the most underrated brands because they've been around for such a long time and I think most people's focus is new, 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 what's new, what's exciting, what's the fresh, fresh young brand. They also have some incredible skincare as well. Next, I picked up a Sephora 24 brush, and I'm gonna go into this shade right here, this kind of medium, deeper brown, but not quite the deepest in the palette, just to give a little depth. My biggest project to date was with Lancome. It was a Lancome Macy's gift with purchase ad that I created last year, and I finally got to see it come to life this spring, and I know so many people reached out and said, I saw your Macy's Lancome ad, which was so cool. And I also had photos on the website. I got to see it run a couple times before YouTube videos. I think it also ran on the mobile Hulu apps and a couple other streaming services. I'm trying to think about what other updates I have for you. Life has just been so busy the last few weeks, but this entire year, I don't know what happened. I feel like I ended 2022 in a very peaceful mode. Everything had slowed down a little bit and I started the year a little bit slower and it is just full steam ahead at the moment. I feel like I am drowning and just barely able to keep up. Not just with professional stuff, but personal stuff. You know, life, life happens, which is completely normal. I think there are seasons for everything and there are times when things just get so busy and it can feel very overwhelming. And I think it's going to be that way for me for the next probably month, but I'm hoping I can just get through the next month and then hopefully things will slow down a little bit. And it probably doesn't even seem that way because I haven't really been posting as much, but just because I'm not posting a lot of content doesn't mean I'm not like a chicken with my head cut off because I definitely am. I'm in a perpetual state of trying not to have a mental breakdown. <laughs> At least that's how it's felt lately. Pretty boring stuff and I'm sure nobody really cares, but one of the reasons why I've been so busy this year and working so hard behind the scenes is because I've changed the structure of my business. So I officially set up an LLC in the state of Florida. I am a business owner. 
this year and I started back in December for a couple different reasons. It just it makes it so that if I want to expand and build the business, I have sort of the foundation in place also for tax purposes. And I always kind of put it off because that's not the kind of stuff that I like to focus on and work on, but it is essential. <laughs> so finally, I decided at the end of December that I was going to get my ducks in a row and just set up a business, set up the LLC. And I honestly thought I would just fill out some paperwork, sign and date a few things, and that's about it. It has been a nightmare. It has truly been a monster. I know that in the long run, I will be so thankful that I actually took the time to do all of these necessary steps, but wow. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and I think had I known what I was getting myself into, I probably would have continued to put it off. So it's a good thing I just kind of jumped right in and now I'm too far along. I can't really go back. I just have to finish everything that I started. Using my fingers, I just picked up this really pretty metallic beige, kind of a pewter beige, and I'm just tapping this on the lid just to give a little dimension to the eye. It's so pretty. I have so much respect for any business owners and any small business owner will tell you it is no simple feat. It's just me, by the way. I don't have... A manager I don't have a team it's just me I read and negotiate all of my contracts I do all of the administrative stuff I set up my schedule the best I can and then I create the content I plan the content it's very overwhelming in and of itself and then I feel like this whole business structure aspect has truly been like a full-time job basically I feel like I have two full-time jobs my time management is where I have really been failing lately. I feel self-aware, I know what I need to do, and I think once I get the ball rolling, once everything is kind of off the ground, I'll be able to sigh some relief, and then I'll be able to get back to doing what I actually love, which is the creating the content. I'm just buffing a little bit of that original eyeshadow underneath the lower lash line. If I'm being honest with myself and honest with you, I don't truly have a super clear vision about what I want to do, where I want to go with my business and, you know, maybe starting a brand or offering a different service or an app or a product. I, I have no idea, but I definitely want continued growth. That I know for sure. What that will look like, I'm not sure. And the steps I'm taking now, albeit painful in the moment, are setting me up for that future growth. I think one day I'll look back and I'll be so proud. I'm back, eyebrows are now done. I did a little liquid eyeliner on the top lash line. And then I'm going to highlight the brow bone and the inner corner of the eye using this Rare Beauty highlighter in the shade Enlighten. So I just pulled up, I have a little tiny precision brush right here. And I am going right in the tear duct. So pretty. I also think this would be really nice as an eyeshadow as well. I'm just gonna dab a teeny tiny bit of this right in the center of the lid. We already have that metallic shadow, but it just adds a little sparkle, I think. Not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. I don't have a new mascara, but I do have this old mascara that's new for me. This is Too Faced Better Than Sex. I know I must have tried this at some point, a while ago. It's been around for such a long time and it's been a bestseller for a long time. I tried it again recently and I fell in love with it and since my current mascara is running out, I'm kind of looking for my next top drawer mascara. I really love the new Give Beauty that I tried last week and I really like this one. I think what I love about it is that it doesn't mess around. It is so fast. If you want volume, it's going to give you volume very quickly. Lashes are now done. I almost forgot. I want to use a little eyeliner in the waterline. This is the Chanel Stilo Yo Waterproof shade 52 Kier Dore. It's a really beautiful copper, almost rose gold. I think it ties in really nicely with the eyeshadow. The last step is lips, and I have two new products here that were sent over from Buxom. This is the full-on plumping lip polish in the shade Whitney. I really like these buxom glosses. They're plumping, they just feel really nice on the lips, and I love this color. It has a little shimmer to it. 
kind of reminds me of Chanel 119, very comparable. And this is the Buxom Powerline Plumping Lip Liner in the shade Savvy Sienna. Ooh, that's cool. So the lip liner is kind of a triangle and then it has a really nice lip brush on the other side. Sometimes lip pencils do have a brush, but they're usually not this nice. I overlined the top a little bit. I was trying to follow this tutorial I saw the other day. I think it was on either Instagram or TikTok from Mary Phillips. She's such a talented makeup artist. She does Kendall Jenner's makeup a lot and I always love the way she does her lips. So what she does is she says she starts just outside the lip line and she kind of brings it out and as she's going up, she's going a little bit further out from the lip line and then she just kind of extends past. And then she kind of connects right on top of the natural lip. And then I'm just feathering that in. It creates a really nice lip contour if you really like that contoured lip look. But you still have the same natural lip shape, which I like. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do the bottom now. She does basically the same thing on the bottom. She really only goes outside of the lip line, right in the center. Okay, not bad. First time I've tried it. I really like this lip brush. And I like the color of the lip liner as well. But the brush, this is what's the selling point, I think. And then Mary usually goes back and cleans everything up with concealer. I'm gonna skip that part <laughs> because I just can't be bothered. Final step, I'm gonna top off my lips using this full-on plumping lip polish in the shade, what did I say, Catherine Whitney. Whoops, <laughs> I was totally off. See, now that the lip liner is blended out, this gloss works perfectly. Mmm, it has the nicest smell, it's kind of vanilla, and then it has the plumping. My lips look huge. <laughs> I like it. The lip might be my favorite part of this entire look. Yeah, that's really nice. This is the finished look. What do you think? I think it turned out really cute. Soft glam. It's very similar to what I normally do. This is how I usually do my makeup just with other products. I don't like the way my pores are looking right here. And my chin is very dry and it's a little bit tight. My chin is probably going to peel for a couple days because of my skincare. That really can't be helped. I'm gonna have to keep using it and keep wearing it for probably the next week or so once my skin comes back to normal. I'll keep using this, but I love the shade. I love the way it blended with the other products. I definitely loved the way it blended with this concealer. I think these two match made in heaven right here. Love this concealer. This is really impressive to me because as much as my skin is kind of going through it at the moment and it's very dry, I don't have a lot of creasing underneath the eye. And I love the coverage. It looks very smooth and perfecting. The Rare Beauty highlighters I love. Now this is more of a going out date night highlighter. It's not something that I've ever worn for daytime besides today. I just wanted to share it because I don't think I've talked about it in a YouTube video, but it looks very bright and blinding. It's just so reflective. But then when you turn away, it doesn't look like it's just kind of like sitting on top of the skin. So I love the highlighters. That Sephora bronzer I don't love. It's okay. It's nice. I'll use it again just to kind of see what happens. But it wasn't the easiest thing to blend and I don't know if the shade is my favorite. I feel the same way about this actually. I honestly thought this was going to be the best thing ever and I was going to absolutely love it. All of the reviews I've seen have been rave reviews. The color is nice. The consistency is okay. I don't think I did it justice. I didn't use the, the right brush at first. I think because they are so pigmented, you need a brush that's very light and fluffy. Otherwise, it might look too harsh on the skin. It was a tough competition, but that mascara is insane. I can't believe I only basically did one coat on this eye and it looks, what's going on with my hair? I did one coat on this eye and it looks so fluffy and it just doesn't clump. 
not at the moment. I mean, it's a new mascara. You would hope that it wouldn't clump, but I'm really impressed with the formula again. And then this Buxom lip combination I think is really pretty. I love the little lip brush. I'm wondering if they have, I'm sure they do have other shades. I like the Sienna, Savvy Sienna, because once you blend it out, it does look more nude, pillow talky, but I'm wondering if they have something more of a true peachy nude that's not quite as dark as this. Makeup is done, but I wanted to leave you with my fragrance for the day as well, and I am feeling this Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush. It's very happy fragrance. It's floral. It's zesty. I think it is so unlike the original, so it kind of throws you at first, but I love it. Mm. It's really juicy and citrusy at first, but then it dries down and it's very soft and elegant, a little bit powdery, and then you get a lot of vanilla. I just think it's so elegant. I'm a huge fan of this. I'm back because I almost forgot to talk about this eyeshadow palette, which I love. The Nude Sculptural Palette from Lancome. These eyeshadows are so silky. They blend beautifully, no fallout. It's a neutral eyeshadow palette, so you probably already have something similar. But I would say this is kind of a mini dupe for that Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette that was limited edition, sold out, and so many people have been clamoring for. I think this palette kind of has all of the best shades from that larger palette. So they're different, but I do think this is incredible. And I changed the makeup a little bit. So I was watching the video back and I felt like my under eye was looking a little bit harsh and this has happened to me before. So I quickly went back with a fluffy brush and I just kind of blended and softened the under eye a little bit was maybe looking a little bit too stark. I like to have a really blown out under eye and sometimes I forget to go back and soften it a bit. But now that I've softened the under eye eyeshadow, I actually think this might be one of my favorite makeup looks that I have ever done. It's simple. It's not really crazy or out there or all that exciting, but I just think the colors, the way everything blended and came together, I wish my makeup looked like this every single day. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked seeing how I created this look and hearing my thoughts on some of these new products. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.